Ah, the saga of crappy LEDs continues. And uh, recently I had to change an LED. Well, today I had to change an LED in this floodlight here. It's the one that looks slightly dimmer and colder than this side. And the reason for that was uh, this is the LED that was in there. And as you can see, it's a bit patchy. Um, it's supposed to be a 100 watt LED, but it was down to its final string of LEDs because as you turn the current up, and the brightness increases, then the other ones cut out just thermally and they'll occasionally kick in. But basically speaking, I've got a row of 10 LEDs and that was there were being run at 20 watts. And they're not being run, they're only being run about 37 milliamps at the moment. They're being run at a tenth of their normal rating. And the other ones, as you can see, are just trying to come in. I've uh, got a packet of Lee filters here. This is a, what they call a swatch book in the theatre industry. It's you basically a swatch book of samples of all the different filter gels so you can test them for different applications. So I'm using a... What am I using, actually, here? The one I'm using at the moment is Ultimate Violet. Ooh, that's nice. That's probably why I chose it, because I quite like Ultimate Violet's really. Um, Congo Blue would have been a good choice as well, because it's a nice dark colour. But as I turn that down and the, the LED arrays cool down again, you'll see the other ones just randomly kicking in. In a way, it would almost be like quite interesting if you put this in a picture frame with just a, a low current supply, just so it did just make the LEDs do their little thing. But it's very clear in this that the it's not the situation I've had with previous LEDs that when you press down the, on the end, it was the bonds that had come off. It appears to be, well, it probably is bonds, but it's the bonds on the LEDs themselves. It's a, f a LED failure. So, unfortunately, the LED I put in, I thought, let's put in this absolute shitty one because I've not tried these yet. And I sort of, uh, well, I, I got them a while back and was a bit disappointed when they arrived because while most of these other LEDs are big, chunky things with big LED chips in them, and they weigh anywhere between 17.6 to 25 grams, because I weighed them. This one weighs 8 grams, and it's got tiny little chips, and I can actually demonstrate that by holding this magnifier up here and projecting an, an image of the chips. Uh, so that's a supposedly 50 watt one, and it's got 50 very small chips in it. Uh, this one over here is supposedly a 100 watt one, and uh, it's being very much underrun. You can see there's one chip out here, but other than that, this LED's been holding up well. It is a 100 watt LED and it had, a, it was doing that thing where if you run it up slowly, it had all the sort of really leaky chips. So it's not putting out, even at 20 watts, it's not putting out the full 20 watts of light, but it still works quite well. And it has actually lasted very well. It's just that one rogue LED has been out since day one, or just it, it's been just dims in occasionally. So um, I stuck this, uh, the where is it, the really thin one in to see what it's like, and I have to say, they're both running at 20 watts. This one clocked in at 432 on this, which is times 10, which is 4,320 lux, and this one just clocked in, putting it directly under and moving it backwards. It just clocks in at about um, 344, 345. Oh, it's uh, it's making pro no three hundred forty seven is the maximum it's it's peaked out. At. So it's considerably lower than the four hundred and thirty two that I was getting off the other one. So I'm not sure if I'll actually keep that in. Also, the the color mismatch from this side to that side it, it's very visible to me. I don't know if it would be so visible to you, but it looks physically colder. I think it does because my hands are always looking a wee bit peely wally, don't they? And it's going to make them even look more pale. So I may end up putting another of the shady LEDs, and I wonder if this one's any good. Let's uh, do some tests here. So um, this one here, I think this one, had the duff um, bonds onto the LED at the end. So I'm just going to clip this on, ramp the voltage up. Yeah, see that's only got two LED strips light at the end. Let's put this cover over and see if I can attenuate it enough. But I discovered that the two inside, if you press down at the ends, then the other ones come on because it is actually the physical bonds where the LED go on, LED strips go onto the bus bar at the end that seem to have failed in this one. Yeah, which is a bit disappointing because otherwise it was quite a good LED. It was one of our, the better LEDs. Obviously not. Uh, this one is one of the shirty LEDs. I got it as a pack of LEDs and they weren't very good and it is very 
random. Let me uh, put the cover over this one and you'll see that it's just a, it's a checkerboard pattern in there. A lot of the LEDs are just passing current without actually lighting, so um, yeah, but having said that, when you run it full, if you run it up to a modest current, they'll kind of, they won't be very even, but uh, they will mean they sort of, they will mostly light up. Although longevity isn't uh, pred predictable, but I might stick that one in anyway, it's no great deal. I've never found a source of really good, reliable LEDs, but um, having said that, that's probably because I'm a bit of a cheapskate and don't want to pay 30 or 40 quid for one LED. But having said that, you know, it's very easy to change them and it's been quite interesting playing about with these to find out, you know, uh, which ones are good and which ones are bad. Well, they're all kind of, they all have that weakness. I get the feeling that all the problems around these LEDs is down to um, thermal expansion contraction, just breaking the bonds. I think even fairly good LEDs are suffering the same problems. Certainly talking to the local utility company, they've had lots of problems with their LED street lighting. It's been high profile brands. Uh, I wonder if that's down to the electronics or the LEDs themselves. So, um, yeah, I think I'll probably take that LED back out and I'll be replacing it. I'm looking at these, I'm seeing this one has the smallest LEDs. This one has the slightly bigger LEDs. This one is slightly bigger again than this one here, the one that was the most reliable apart from the bonds failing at the end, the one that the LEDs themselves are performing right. This one here has the biggest chips. So, um, yeah, that's kind of disappointing really. Um... But there you go, uh, some of them really are just, I think they must be just fake 50 watt LEDs. They're just designed to look like a 50 watt LED with the five rows of chips, but just the construction and everything is just so light and flimsy that even at 20 watt, it's kind of pushing it, the, those LEDs to the limit because they, they pretty much look like the sort of LEDs you'd find inside an ordinary five millimeter LED, they're that small. So yes, ongoing experiments in the area of LED bench lighting.